This is my TSR80 Model 1 with Level 2 Basic and 16K of RAM. It was purchased on eBay and tested without a power supply or cables or monitor. So I built a PSU for the system and a composite video cable. I've also installed the lowercase mod and as a monitor I'm using a black and white CCTV monitor which works quite well. I've also purchased a modern hard drive emulator with an additional 32k of RAM and this is using an enhanced version of the firmware so I can use the TSR FID software for video playback. The audio is outputted from the cassette interface. Okay, now it's time to learn how to program your computer. Hmm. 
to start coding. We should be able to figure out. Okay, here's another next button telling the machine what n is. And here's our same old two string. In this case, n is an equation. But when we run it, we get the answer to the equation, 4, not the equation itself. Follow me on it? Ooh, it looks what? I'm sorry. I forgot the great number of powers. One more easy one. This program has got three instructions. First, a left statement gives Q a value. Oh, and this means 10 divided by 2. Then we let T equal 3 times 5. The asterisk is what we use for multiplication, so we won't confuse the machine with another X. And finally, we want to print out Q, Q, and whatever is T divided by Q. Then we run it. We get what Q is, what T is, and what T over Q is. In the same order, we ask for them in the print statement. Uh, I've got all that, no problem. But I've got to know more than this easy stuff if I'm going to take over the store. Oh, okay. Here yeah, I ask for it. Let me show you a program that'll start on your way. This three statement program starts with something familiar. So we'll first type out what's in quotes here. It proceeds with next instruction, input x. So the computer will stop until you input some value for x. When you input a number, it will then proceed to the next statement, which is a print instruction that prints out a group of words in quotation marks and a value for x. Okay, let's put it. I want to see what happens. There, yeah, you see? It printed what was in quotation marks in the first command, then stopped when it came to the next, and signaled this by a question mark. Give me a number, John. Well, how about lucky seven? There, you see. Once you give it what it asks for, it resumes running the program. Remember, the last print statement in line 30 asks the computer to print the word you pick, and then the value is up. And here it is. So once the program is rolling, it can ask me for data to complete the program. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. That's the way you interact with computers when you're doing things like playing games. The computer is programmed with a game program, and when you play it, you're just putting data into input statements, though you may not know it. You can use all sorts of devices to communicate with the computer. To give it data through input instructions. You can use a device called a light tank that can input data into a computer when you touch certain areas of the video screen. You can even input information by voice if you have a microphone connected to a personal computer. Now let's go. And now we're cooking. Let's see some more. Okay. This will look familiar. Line 30 
part of the print dotted lines which will appear under the title. Hey, can the computer jump from 30 to 110? Sure. And that's where you're going to insert additional data later. You'll see in a minute. Mm -hmm. Now, in line 110, the program will create a new value for X by subtracting 1 from its previous value of 4. This will create a new value of X equal to 3. The machine continues to the next statement, line 120, where it makes a decision. If X equals 0, then go to line 140. If X does not equal 0, the computer skips ahead to the next line, 130, which says go to line 30. There, it will be instructed to print the dotted lines again. The computer will then proceed on from there to line 110, and again reduce the value of x by 1, this time from 3 down to 2. Well, you can see that it will go around this loop four times until x finally does equal 0, and it finally can go to 140, which ends the program. What do you think will happen when we run it? Well, it'll go around in circles. It's only printing out a dotted line each time, and it has an end, so... Ah, it prints out the dotted line four times. I guess you could change that number for X and print out as many lines as you wanted. Hmm. Okay, now we can control it, but can it do anything useful? But I need to be in the dark. That's why I just entered another program from this cassette. Take a look. Yeah, wait a minute. I got an idea. Well, I'm jumping 